I think we can start with our first speaker of the day. Let me try to uh, to get him on stage. Um, here we go. Hello, Juan Ocampo. Hi, good morning, Wuta. How are How you are today? You? Very good, thank you. Greetings from Berlin. How are you? Yeah, very good. How is it in Berlin? How is the weather right now? Well, the, the sun was out a couple of minutes ago and it, it comes and goes. Uh, I think in the last uh, in the last week it has been um, it has been very changing, but we had 30 degrees yesterday, so it was almost summer. <laughs> wow, cool. Uh, that, that, that sounds great. How is it at uh, High Rise Ventures? So um, wonderful right now. We are um, we're very happy that we closed the last year with 16 different um, investments, everything in early stage in PropTech here in Germany. And uh, one of, um, I just saw one of the press releases from uh, one of our first investments uh, two years ago, closing a Series A. So it's it's going really well right now. We're very happy. No, we're very happy to have you with you today. Uh, I think you also have a presentation uh, with you that you Correct. would like to, to share. Uh, and I should have a guest too, actually. I don't know if, uh, if uh, you can also get him on stage for us. That would be great, wonderful. Yes. Good morning, Raja. Hi guys. Do you hear me well? We can Very good. Hi. Hi from how's, Vienna. How's Vienna? Well, I could actually show it to you. It's very sunny. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, I would like to give you both the stage. Uh, welcome, Dezan, and uh, uh, your 30 minutes. Uh, well, we, we're just starting, so uh, let's give it a shot. Enjoy. Well, thank you for the invitation. Happy thank to be you here. Very much. Thank you. Um, can you help me out um, just loading the, the presentation, Uta? I'm not sure. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining today. We're very happy to open today's session uh, on smart and healthy build um, healthy buildings. Um, my name is uh, Juan Ocampo. I'm a principal at High Rise Ventures. We're a, a small venture capital and company building in Berlin, focused on early stage investments. Um, anything around smart building technologies and property management is what we do. Um, and today I'm, I'm very happy to welcome um, our guest, uh, Drajan Ivanis. Uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself, Drajan? Uh, we don't have much, that much time for that. I'm just kidding. So, uh, hi, my name is Drajan. I'm from Vienna uh, and uh, worked at Unibel Rodamco Westfield that a lot of people I assume know. And this is where I got some experience in facility management and made a decision to start Wowflow. And luckily for me and my team, uh, Juan and uh, and his team from Higher Res Venture are quite a supportive investors. So thank you. We're very excited because um, we, um, as I said, we we are an early stage investor, and um, and mostly I would say fifty percent of our portfolio was at the beginning very focused on residential spaces and residential units. And when we came across uh, with Wow Flow, we were we had the Wow effect definitely. We had the Wow effect, and and we really liked the team. We really liked what they were doing, and and there is uh, there is definitely a need within the commercial real estate to make certain uh, things that, uh, of course, faster and more transparent. And from our perspective, we see the customer journey of the owner from commercial real estate spaces in four different, let's say, um, um, areas, right? We know that there's a lot of uh, companies increasing sustainability, optimizing energy consumption. There are also some other companies, some other startups integrating new utilization concepts, right? spaces that are at the moment not occupied how can you um, use them efficiently of course avoiding identifying problems monitoring the last two years indoor climate parameters have been also really really important and 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 um the topic of today right um smart and healthy uh, buildings and boosting transparency and efficiency this is why for me it made sense to have wowflow today to talk about it right um, because we are uh, we are talking about uh, how do we make it more efficient. I don't know if you can still there it is perfect. Um, so so we, we we have a very limited time today, right, Rajan? We could yes. we could be here for for a long time talking about uh, about different topics, but we selected three different discussion points that we would like to address today, and maybe 
if there's uh maybe try to exchange what are our perceptions about that so so we have three things one of them being what is a building that it's healthy and smart when do you reach you know those specific states and whose responsibility is it at the end right maybe also talk a little bit about the efficiency how do you measure it when you are working remote also the last two years um, a lot of people have not been on sites have been working from other places, other areas, and how can you measure that your teams, right, or outside teams are also being efficient? And then maybe just the last one, hopefully we will also have some time to, to talk about it. How do we increase transparency and efficiency as a facility management? And I was seeing some uh, some statistics, uh, and maybe you can also uh, drive and tell us a little bit about it, that uh, more there are more facility managers that are, I think, over 60 or 70 year olds than the facility True. managers below 30, right? Uh, so maybe let's start a little bit with those statistics, Rajan. I mean, uh, the statistics <laughs> are quite an interesting topic because um, um, it's, it's a pretty much the facility management. You know, the facility management, when you think about it, uh, was a branch uh, that uh, developed itself mainly because of a necessity. Like a lot of people that I know, um, I also came into the facility management not being a uh, stand not having studied facility ma facilities management I pretty much uh, went to the technical university a typical electrical engineering worked for a uh, <clears throat> um, a owner of hospitals and worked there on a pro project management and and building management and then got into the shopping centers uh, and uh, for Unibelo Damco Westfield and started working as a facility manager and I think almost everybody that I know that came uh, that is a facility manager didn't be become by studies facility manager they pretty much developed as one of course now it's getting more um, uh, popular I would say in a case where people uh, can study and take this study in a way but it's still it's still i would still say that it's mainly mainly the uh, the contributors in facility management are the people who uh, let's say go into the as the Reinrutschen in german as they say they go into the into the task but yes so when we take when you take on the landscape uh, of the people um is most and uh, i don't have the exact numbers at the moment in my head but the most of facility managers are at the age where you also see the young ones like um not just facility but when it comes to facility management we also have to include the service companies working in the facilities because they are the one who carry out the work and just today i had a for example a call with a young guy who just took over the cleaning um and a service company from their parents and now he's like uh, i would say 28 year old and he's pretty much taking it over and looking for digitalization looking for way how to make things smoother and more automatized and not uh, doing it in a in an old-fashioned way where yeah uh, where the technology is also there and pushing forward I, I, I really like that you that you mentioned. Um, uh, I mean, uh, we are talking about smart and healthy buildings, right? That is, of course, the the main topic here. But you mentioned something about the people, the people being very important, and I agree completely on that. And I would like maybe to deep dive a little bit on that, right? Um, the people, and then the second point is you also mentioned the word um, automation, right? Making everything yes. a little bit that everything that's a routine, you know, automate those kind of processes that are sometimes even boring. Sometimes if you don't pay enough attention, there's room for errors and there's room for mistakes. Um, maybe deep, going a little bit uh, in, in that direction, right? Uh, and, and going to the first question, what is a, a building that's healthy from your perspective and that's smart? We all know Internet of Things. I'm a very big fan of it, right? I even was the, the, the managing director of one uh, Internet of Things startup a couple of years ago, and I love sensors. But why are sensors not the, the ultimate solution for smart building uh, from your perspective? Right? I mean, there is uh, IoT in every step. And when we talk about smart buildings and healthy buildings, uh, well, the question is the same definition. What does one mean by healthy and what does one mean by smart? Um, my perception of things is, is <clears throat> yes, the buildings, <clears throat> for example, 
one of the projects that we had, and I, as I was a facility manager, uh, was what we did was there was uh, we substituted around five thousand lights uh, that were the uh, old T8 lamps, and we substituted them with a lamp that is uh, run by LED. And the return on investment was actually, I would say, in the first six months because that's wow. uh, and the, the warranty was five years on these lamps. So literally, we had an amazing deal there. So this is also a great thing to. But yes, this is the technology. But unfortunately, I have to say, we all forget about people. And this is kind of my life's mission in a way and my team's life mission to improve this one because there are no sensors uh, uh, like being uh, here direct when it comes to people because um, if you are not having an optimized cleaning routine, if you are pretty much... Um, Break, uh, repairing the machines or the assets that are breaking down a lot and you don't have the statistics and information about how often is machine being broken and what reason because the people who are doing it is are just not having the tools to document it properly clear uh, then you pretty much lose all this operational insight where actually the most money goes right of course uh, the the scope of costs for the building is utilities, meaning energy, gas, waste, and stuff like this, clear. But we also have the, the cost of people working there, which are quite a substantial costs. And of course, of the <clears throat> all of the things that these people has to actually uh, do. So healthy building, I mean, in the end, it's all about sustainability. So the building that I was working on was, uh, or the first part was built in 1974. Wow. And it was the first building that was able to achieve BREAM in use outstanding in uh, in um, it was not in Dach region because there was a company in Germany who did it but it was definitely you know, first in Austria and in Switzerland I would say at the moment where I was a facility manager so you can do a lot uh, with with a building that is set up for sustainability where you can upgrade let's say it like this when it comes to smart there are two ways of thinking smart one way of thinking smart would be the all the IoT meaning uh, the things where you could use the natural cooling, the nights, the cooler nights where you open the windows and then you have natural cooling instead of using energy to cool, but also uh, using the operational insights of the people who are working there every day where they can proactively rec uh, also mention the things that they notice that can also be improved because let's face it, uh, we, uh, we, if we, if we, if we are not ourselves on the site as managers, well, we should enable our people who are on the site to communicate how they see the things can even run more efficient. Trajan, and what happens when, and I agree completely with you on that, right? It is about people. It is about tools. I also like that you mentioned tools and, and this is part of the challenge, but what happens when, when it's not just your team that you're managing, right? Your own team within your company, but you're also working with external service providers, right? And then there's also a communication barrier. <clears throat> what can you tell us maybe a little bit about working with external companies? Well, external companies, especially today, where everything is being more and more outsourced because it's the company policy to outsource things because uh, you want to give the job to the professionals, uh, for example, instead of uh, you, uh, you know, um, having 40 people on a big shopping center or on a big real estate site where you have to do all the administration stuff just to hold these 40 people, right? And teach them daily and improve them and everything. You give it out to, to a special company. But this company, the outsourced company is an integral part because integral part of an operation because this company is coming every day to your building with 40 people workforce, this is an example, uh, to help you on the operations. And mainly if something goes wrong or if something isn't okay on the site, they are the ones who are going to first be to notice and they are the ones who are, should and will report you on what to do and uh, how to proceed, right? When there is a fire, when there is some type of a issue, they are the ones on the watch first that actually are the first line of information that follows up to you. And collaboration is an extremely important thing because let's take again cleaning as an example. It's very tough to document, right? If you don't document it properly, if someone does a perfect job, but that the person turns around and the kills, uh, the kid uh, spills something or something kind of happens, and you as a manager come in at that exact moment, you have a feeling these people are doing nothing, where just like uh, someone was there half an hour ago trying to make the best thing possible, right? So collaboration and communication in this, and then documentation in the end, is an essential part if you want to see how your building uh, uh, is run 
And due diligence is, for example, also a very important thing. We all know that, let's say, office buildings are being sold in a ratio of every 10 years. And if you don't have any operational footprint of how much uh, uh, energy was invested to operate this uh, office building, well, when you sell it, it's not going to be easy to argument, okay, where did this money go in a daily operation to make this uh, building or asset popular? And this, where if you have this on your uh, whatever tool, um, then you can easily communicate it, show it, and also the people are happier because suddenly they can communicate what they did. So, um, so I, I hear I hear what you're saying, and, and when when you're talking about collaboration, and maybe you're talking also about uh, maybe integrating processes with your service providers, and that, that they understand what are your needs and everything, and, and documentation, um, and 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 most of these processes in the last I would say I don't know 30, 40 years, and, and maybe from the beginning of time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, everything was very manual. Every, everything was very Right, and we're coming to a digital age. What are the challenges right now that facility managers are facing when it comes to I want to be healthy and I want to be uh, 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 having smart and healthy business uh, or, or buildings? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, they they face a lot of challenges. You know, investing in a smart and healthy building is is always the play with the return on investment because when you are buying some new machineries that. I don't know. It's not exp not not inexpensive. It goes from 100k to a few million, depending on what it is. Of course, the return. I can remember that there was a heating machine that was, in our case, being able to run from zero to 100. There is no in between. And then we changed it with a few small ones that were able to run between in 10 percentage uh, away. So we need a hybrid, uh, meaning uh, that suddenly you could regulate it at the point where you need, because even in summertime you might need some heating, even in winter time you might need some cooling. You, you always need it and you cannot run with full resources. Um, and of course, there is always the fight with budget and who is going to approve the budget, where the budget is going to be invested uh, on one side, but also um, it's about behavior as well, right? Uh, you can have the best building, the smartest building with the latest uh, innovation, but if people are not separating the trash properly, if, um, if the thing is a mess in a way, well, it's not, you know, the culture is not going to communicate that what you actually stand for. And this is where the, the, the onboardings, the, the communication, like said, is very, very important, but then pretty much the people can, can communicate it. And also one thing that facility managers, I would also say, fight with is the ability to easily communicate. And because, you know, we are dig the digitalization of facility management is a digitalization of something that is actually a little bit behind, I would say. Mm -hmm. And people are, especially the workforce there is, I don't know, in Germany and Austria, uh, I don't know, in all Europe has, has mainly is with migration background, with some language issues. And then they are kind of afraid, okay, you know, is this thing that I'm using to report my work tracking me? And does it know if I go here and there? Also feeling them, making them feel safe, but also making them understand that this, this is what they're doing so that they can, in order to improve, not just the way they are working and what they are doing, but the whole uh, operation of their teams and communication and the challenge is also that um, unfortunately it a lot of tools that i witnessed and the reason why i uh, made wowflow happen was a lot of tools were from uh, bottom down you know wow. here is a big thing you go but it's the workforce that reports the work. And if you are not able to see how the workforce is working, that you will not having nothing to measure. If you have nothing to measure, well, as a manager, guess what? You don't have nothing to manage. Um, and this is where this is important is to really, really to, to be your customer, if you are a service provider, software provider, is the end user, is the person on site who will report their work. Because if they have no issues and and actually accept your tool and trust in your tool, well, then the management is going to be even more happier because suddenly now they have all so-called technical working data uh, that they can work with, analyze, understand, and improve. And how how is it right now that uh, and I I agree right um, what you can what you can measure you can manage and you can improve and and how. Um, how can a facility manager right now measure efficiency when we are having always new processes, new tools, new technologies? Um, what, what's happening right now in that in that particular area? 
I mean, it really depends of uh, what is current. <laughs> like I said, uh, you can have the best tools, and there is a lot of good tools. But it's the main the main point is the usage. How well is it being accepted by the people you work with, and how easy is, is it going to be to use? Um, and that's the main thing. And that's the if just uh, let's say you have a workforce of 100 people, but just only the technicians who are doing special measurements, let's say 20 people are able to work with it because it's very complex and it needs to onboarding and all of these things. Well, you're losing information. Um, may, could you repeat the, the, the second part of your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, what, what is um, what kind of uh, of challenges right now are present when you want to measure efficiency? Uh, and, and maybe going down a little bit on, on that question is you talk about culture and I agree culture is a very big aspect, but also I think you talk about complexity of the tools, right? Complexity of everything that you have. Is that maybe a challenge right now with the current available tools outside? Would that be uh, what, what's your uh, opinion on that? Well, you know, one of the main things how you measure efficiency is the so-called service level agreements, right? You know, if it's a cleaning, then you have this reaction time. If it's maintenance or urgency, you have this and that reaction time. Okay, but then how is it being done? We all know that if you do, you if you want to do something fast, most of people tend to take their phone in hands, call someone, or send a message, or send a WhatsApp, or send an email, or something like this. How do you measure then the service level agreement in that case? How could how do you evaluate emails? How do you evaluate extra sheets? How do you evaluate even if it's an extra sheet, of course? And how do you evaluate all of these things? Uh, and if you are integrated in a way where you can easily communicate, where as we talk about automation, um, where everything is on the go, meaning I don't know, I'm in this type of building or I'm at this type a certain part of building, and this people are in charge and suddenly if something happened any movement happens there they are notified and as they are notified the one that is not takes over the responsibility delegates it further and that goes into the automatic workflow document as you work meaning document as you go so there is no even thinking of okay all the pictures that i created all the reports that i created now i have to sit down and write the report as we all know but actually no i don't need to do anything I just reported that this was done. I made a small description, for example, and all the surrounding is supporting me in, aut in automation so that the reports are being automatically created, documentation or whatever. And this makes it easier, much, much easier. And this makes it also easier to measure the efficiency. You know, why do we have such a slow reaction times in this building part or these types of buildings versus these types of buildings? And this doesn't have to be people based, it's work based, it's category based, it's um, and then you can always break it down and even deeper and see this. But like we mentioned before, if you do not have the information, you will not be able to measure. And from my experience, there is really a lot of great tools out there, of course, big ones. But the most that I uh, got to know were made out of the point of administration. You know, you put in the building rooms, you, you, you just oh, you just administrate your big building, you know, and you can make great plans and you can make great details and you can see every pipe of the building. But what about maintenance information? What about the dynamics of the work in the building? Uh, well, that for me, they need a mobile app, but for this, a mobile app needs to be mobile friendly, user friendly. But then we are talking about more of the workflows than automation. And this is the point I hope that I was able to uh, uh, clarify. Yeah, definitely. And I think you're also maybe going into a, a, a very specific problem that uh, that I see happens with a lot of prop techs, right? The decision makers uh, of uh, of whatever solution that will be tested sometimes are not really the people that are using those solutions and that they will benefit at the end from those solutions. And I think that's uh, that's uh, that's a very important, very important topic that the complexity of the solutions that we use, right? Uh, in uh, managing a building, in, in having a, a building that's healthy, that's smart, sometimes they need to be they need to be uh, more focused on whoever is uh, going to use them, and not really from the from the management perspective. That really that really happens a lot. Uh, one thing that I can easily add to this, uh, if you know asset managers, the operational asset managers who are in charge of an asset they are not just in charge of the building in operations but they are also charge in the building of leasing and all of these things right they they really are managing the asset but most of them if you ask them do you understand your facility management they will tell you yes there is a budget line of facility management and that's what they say they need to make it uh, maintain the building and that's it 
but what if because of all of the gathering of the workflows on site suddenly you are able to make a summary executive report to the asset managers where they actually understand that you know um, this much money gets go, goes on mu this much incidents uh, and these things and suddenly the incidents that were always disregarded now will be understood by a, as a asset manager that will go to the portfolio manager the owner for example and say look we are losing 10 percent of our operational budget on these incidents let's make a construction or let's re refurbish this part to do something like this because actually then we will lower this cost but like I said before and this comes mainly because it's in 90% of the times that I know, the asset manager, when it comes to reporting of a building operations, will get an Excel sheet. And in Excel sheet will stay uh, HVAC system, cleaning, uh, uh, all of these points inside. And good luck with evaluating the efficiency of these operations in your building. And uh, and this is where it has to go. Our, our clear status is it has to go bottom up because the people report when you can report you can analyze and then uh, you can uh, document as well and then make it in an executive summary where people actually understand what's going on and improve it of course interesting perspective can you tell us maybe a little bit about uh wowflow and maybe what, what are the target customers right now I mean, our target customers uh, for a moment are facility management teams uh, and uh, service companies, cleaning uh, and maintenance. Uh, Wowflow is a, I would say, a lot of customers who are not uh, that uh, uh, close to digital tools. They say, okay, what's the difference between your application and WhatsApp, which is for us, I would say, quite, <laughs> I, I, always, I always take it positive because actually that means that we are really compared on a simplicity level with something that everybody can use. And this is where we actually want to be. Uh, and uh, pretty much like mentioned, this is a tool where a lot of people without, with no knowledge, with different languages can use, can go into their buildings, log in, log out, meaning see if they're there, if they're not there, how long were they there, document they work. And all the bottlenecks managers are pretty much having the information come to them as they need it. So uh, the, the main two very propositions is that administration time goes down by 50% and wow. quality insurance goes above up to 30, 20 to 30% because suddenly because you having view on what's happening in your operations, uh, you are not blind and you can, you can have a pinpoint the quality insurance. And of course, all of this documentation suddenly is available also for your customers if you want to send it to them and then they also see what was actually done and what is actually going on because let's say it like this in a facility management if you know me i'm not doing a good job because a facility manager is a person that no one should know uh, and uh, and no one should uh, be aware of because if i do my job well you never heard about me you never knew me wonderful that's that's also a very interesting perspective about facility management um, and I think, and I would maybe just like to 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 uh, to give my my two cents on the simplicity. And I I remember talking to Dragen a couple of uh, years ago when we met, and we, when we talk about also how important is the simplicity in products. Not because products need uh, uh, or, or should be simple uh, because they cannot have any kind of complexity, but because sometimes the people that use those products are not as uh, friendly users of different technologies, right? And I think that's uh, that's a, an interesting an interesting point that every product developer should always strive for simplicity. That is very clear. That is very intuitive. What what you are doing, and that also makes makes always room for improvements in the day to day in the day to day work. And that's actually a really really good. I I uh, I would also say that's also really good when you're compared to WhatsApp, <laughs> Drajan. That's uh, that's great. And I think at the same time it's a very a scary comparison, but a very good one. I would say it is uh, a scary comparison. <laughs> that's that's true. But uh, if you have to dive deep and say what we mean by WhatsApp, but when someone's like, yeah, I can see, I can click here, I can see what's happening, I can. And I said, okay, thank you, Ed. Thanks a lot because that means a lot because even my parents who really hate digital uh, 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 tools and phones they are master users of whatsapp <laughs> and uh, and then that means uh, that you know and we have a lot of cases where uh, by the onboarding we are pretty much up to 90 percent not onboarding the service personnel so we onboard management and then management assigns the tickets and after the few one or two test tickets where the users are kind of testing what they need to do they already know and it's also i 
really hope that it makes fun for them as well because suddenly there is a tool that serves them and not that they have to use because they have to serve the system. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Drajan, for um, for uh, for the uh, for the answers to the questions to this morning. Thank you for participating here. Maybe I would just like to conclude this um, this discussion of today. If I can change, and it's visible right now, the PowerPoint presentation. Maybe just talk a little bit about high rise ventures. As I said, we are in early stage. PropTech investor based in Berlin. Um, our focus is property management in different asset classes. As we, as I said, maybe our very first and very um, very first five, I would say, investments they were uh, during or um, in the residential space. But slowly, we start to identify some other um, some other solutions that also target different spaces, such as the office space and uh, also some other commercial real estate um, assets. Um, right now, we close 2021 with 16 different prop tech, um, prop techs, most of them, 80% of them uh, in Germany, right? Uh, we have a very good innovation hub in Berlin, uh, some of them in Berlin, some of them in the south of Germany. Um, and, and with Wowflow, we went uh, for our, our very first time outside of Germany to Vienna, where we also are seeing a lot of innovation, really interesting things happening in PropTech. And as I said, 16 investments uh, by the end of 2021. And we are also looking for more innovation within the property management and smart building technology. So if there's any... Uh, particular uh, point or um, or any particular company that you would like to introduce us, please reach out um, to us and we will be happy to discuss any um, any potential cooperation. Um, at this point, again, I would like to, to thank Drajen for his participation, for him being here with me and talk a little bit about facility management. And I will also like to, to thank uh, Wuta and the whole team. Krista, thank you very much for, for organizing this uh, this event today. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, Bose. Well, I have a question if uh, if I'm allowed to. Uh, just one, one, one question for both of you, because of uh, Jason, I have one question to you. I, I looked at to your uh, to your website, and I think it's really amazing what you do because you said it's uh, it's really easy to implement. It's like five hours. How come? I can I can give you an example. I can give you. Well, it has to be like you know. It's it's a, a lot of and you know it yourself. All of us are mainly learn on, as you go, right? Learn, you, we all learn. We, who of us is actually, you know, reading the manual before using a thing? No one, right? Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> no either. one. Do you, when you get a new phone, do you read the manual before you start it? No, you don't. And the same thing with the software. So uh, just an example of a shopping center where one of the assets here in Vienna with 22 technicians, we did the first level of implementation in two hours. And then after two weeks, uh, we had a run are up on one hour and after three hours there were already you people using ticket and documenting them because it's all pushed in a way where you know i assigned you a ticket suddenly comes a pop-up with accept with big button you just and you cannot miss it right <laughs> wow very cool well thank you very much for your uh, for your presentation um and then uh, juan um uh, we are also working for imr on a big challenge on sustainability on in, in buildings and construction methodologies would be great to uh, um, uh to have you also as a partner uh, with us so um, if you're okay with it i will send you later today some information about what we're doing for the the dubai uh, uh well really big developer uh, down there wonderful happy to hear more about it cool well thank you very much both and uh, enjoy your day Thank you. Thank you. Sunny you day. Too. Have a Sunny great day. Exactly. <laughs> bye, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.